Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and to a new episode of my flood damaged Porsche 968. It's been a while since we had an episode on this guy because the previous episode was on the 924 Safari coming home and the one before that was on the 924 Turbo having some work done. So it's high time that we start focusing back on the 968. So what I'm going to be doing in this episode is I'm going to tackle the doors. And as you guys can remember, this is quite a mess. There's still a lot of salt and gunk inside these doors. So the reason I want to tackle the doors now is because this is the last bit of the electrical work that needs to be done on the interior. So there's quite a few things happening in the door. There's the electrical mirror, obviously, that we need to make sure that that works. We've got this little light that needs to flash when the alarm goes on and when the car is locked. There's a central locking mechanism that we have to make sure that still works. And there's this window regulator down there that we have to make sure still works. So bear with me for a little while longer while we work on the interior. I promise you guys the mechanical stuff stuff is coming and it's coming soon but anyway that's enough of me talking so sit back relax and let's start working Right, so the car is now at a nice working height for me again so we can start taking apart this door i don't really have a sequence in mind so i'll probably try and get all the electricals off all of these little old pieces of trim get that off but this regulator and this arm that sits here this cross arm that'll come out last i'll probably need to source some new uh tape like this i might be able to use the same stuff i used on the for the radiator uh, this seems a little bit thinner I need to get this anyway for the HVAC, so I'll be doing some research. If, if any of you know what spec of tape this is, please let me know. But anyway, I'm going to set you guys up so you can follow along. But let's get going on this door. moisture even after all this time one and a half years there's still moisture inside this plug this is why we take these cars apart because the moisture is hiding everywhere one bracket So the regulators on the floor and the motors over there and we are making progress on this door and I thought the next thing for me to do is take out this lock until I discovered that someone's been in here before and these bolts are no longer hex bolts. They are also not working for torques. They are also not working for cheese heads which means I've got a problem so I've got to extract them unfortunately something I was not expecting to do on this car. But um, I'm going to try using my extractor set that I bought like a years ago. And this also worked on the exhaust manifold of the 924 Turbo. And I've got one here that seems to want to work. So I think if I can get this guy to bite, then hopefully we will be able to get these bolts out. Five minutes later. All right. So you can see I've been uh, busy. Um, the extractor set did not work. Um, it's not biting into this. And I also tried hammering a couple of other sockets into here, but this uh, bolt is too soft, so it just gives way. Um, so I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to drill it out. I think that's the easiest, and then I can at least get this piece off. And then hopefully once I've got this piece off, I'll have enough space here to grip a vice grip on to get the threads to come loose on the other side. So I've got a big cobalt drill bit on my drill there. Um, I'm just going to keep on drilling until I have all of this off and then hopefully I can get this guy to pop off. All 
ready. Having those bolts in there is obviously not making things easier. Right, that works. So the arm is off. I think I can fish it out through this hole. Let's see if that works. Why are you fighting me? Normally this won't be this difficult because there won't be two studs stuck to it. Yes, cut it out. Almost. Come on, take it through here. Take it through here. This is maybe better. Gotcha. Now we just need to pull these studs out. Ice grip. Oh, so why does it turn now? Interesting. This was really stuck on there. Oh, well. one down. Also not. I'm not sure why these bolts were stripped to begin with. Um, these are not super tight in here. So it should have been able to just come out. But anyway, someone... Oh, there's some Loctite in there. So maybe I managed to loosen the Loctite. I don't know. All right. Note self, order new bolts. But this guy's done. Good stuff. Let's move on. What I want to do now is I'm going to remove this outer rubber that is on the door. This is the rubber that keeps the glass clean or dry. I don't even know what you call them. In Dutch, it's called the window moustache, but I don't know what you call them in English. It's held on on this side by a screw and on that side by a stud. These are very, very precious. They do not make them anymore, so don't break it. But it's loose on both sides, so I should be able to just peel it off on the outside now. Once I've done that, I should be able to come in here, loosen this bolt, loosen that bolt. There's a nut down there and there's a nut down there. If I get all of this stuff loose, I should be able to pull the glass out of the door. And once the glass is out, we can get the wiring out. Once the wiring is out, we can start cleaning. As you see i've got the window out now so in the end i really only needed to loosen this one to get this glass out but i wanted to get all of the glass out so i took all of this stuff out i tried to keep the settings as they were so hopefully i didn't mess too much with that adjustment but if i did i can still readjust when i build the car up again um, I've got the glass over there. Um, there's a little bit of surface rust on some of the parts, so I'll be treating that. And I also have a little bit of surface rust on here and a little bit in, in the crevices here, but I'll be cleaning this out. And I'm pretty sure as I clean it out, I'll, I'll discover all the things that needs to be remedied. So the next job for me to do now is to get this wiring harness out of the door. Uh, for that to happen, I also have to take off the mirror. Right, to get to get the mirror off the door, you just have to put it this way. Hopefully it comes. There we go. So inside, inside here, there's a 5 millimeter Allen bolt that we just have to uh, loosen up. Hopefully this guy won't fight me. And it's not, which is good. Right. 
if we look inside here, I need to clip through a bunch of tie wraps down there uh, to get the wiring harness out because for some reason, some of them are like this kind, the factory, well, the same as what I used inside there. And other ones are this like open pulley kind of type. So I'm assuming this was done because the window runs here and they don't have the space for these kinds of things, but I'm not sure. I'll have to cut these open, but once I've got that done, then we should have the door free to uh, clean. Minutes later. All right, so I've been struggling with this door harness. Um, I expected that I will be able to just disconnect it from here. And that is the case on the Safari. It actually has a connector right inside the A pillar there. Um, however, this guy, there's no connector inside the door. There's no connector inside there. And I pulled the carpet out again and I traced the cable and it comes out through here. And I even took away the computer again to see if maybe there was a connector underneath the computer, which there isn't. So this wiring harness just seems to keep on going into the car. And it doesn't have a logical spot for me to disconnect it. Which means I am going to just have to deal with it where it is and try and clean it as best as I can in the spot where it is. At least the door is now pretty much barren and empty. So I should be able to clean it out really well the harness i can just clean and sit you it's not what i wanted but it's this way it is i'm not going to strip the whole car again so i'm going to get some soap hot water and brushes and uh, let's start cleaning this door and see if we can bring back some life into it <music> So after a couple of buckets of muddy water and a couple of hours of elbow grease, this is what we end up with. And I'm very happy with the result. You can see all of the adhesive has been removed. Um, I used a bit of a mix of WD-40 and acetone to get that done. But this is now a very clean base for me to put the new vapor barrier on that I ordered from Porsche. Um, and if we look inside here, you can see the door on the inside is also sparkling clean and I've cleaned all of these brackets. And I've also managed to clean this wiring harness and I'm quite happy with the results here as well. Which means it's now time for me to start working on some of the mechanical stuff. I had the regulator in the vise um, and it was quite tough to move. So I've sprayed it with a bunch of uh, penetrating oil. Hopefully that has now loosened it up. Um, and we will also have to go clean up some of that rust spots on the window. Once that is done, we can start building this door up again. Let's get the motor out. This grease is pretty hard. So I'll be cleaning the grease out, putting new grease in. Here we go. Haha, yes. Still a little bit, it's not as smooth as I'd like it, but it's better. I think maybe what I want to do first is take off the gearbox. Right. Ah, right. So you can see in there, it's quite dirty, so I'm going to clean that up as well. It's quite rusty as well. And I think once I have this all cleaned up, we should be in a good position.
So now that I have the window mechanism rebuilt, cleaned, and I hope it works, I don't know if that motor is alive. The only time I'll be able to check it is once I've put it back into this door. But what I want to do now is just clean the windows and the frames and see if there's any rust that I need to treat. So I'll get that done. And I also wanted to share with you something I've discovered, and that's a little bit more rust. Over here, there's not too much, but if you look here, you can see it's just starting to bubble a little bit. So, and also there, so it's just three spots. So um, I need to find a solution for this. I don't know if I can get someone to spot repair this for me, or maybe I'll just sand it down a little bit and touch it up. It's really very minute. You're talking about about a millimeter's worth of paint that you'll see. And I think you'll be distracted by all the stuff that is in this area anyway. This one is a bit bigger. This one runs about, I would say, three, four millimeters down towards the mirror. But again, you'll see the foot of the mirror here. So this will be very much disguised if I were to fix it myself. Two days later. So what you're looking at here might be one of my dumbest moves to date. But um, I guess time will tell. What I've done is I've sanded back the rust that I found under this rubber uh, until I got to the bare metal and then I put some rust stop onto that and that turned all nice and black. I cleaned that off and now I've actually used a small brush to just brush on some edge primer and then once that is done I'll try and clean this up a little bit more and then I'm going to use my touch-up paint to see if I can get this to look half decent. This is very minute areas that you'll see under the rubber, so I think it'll be fine, but still this is scaring the hell out of me, but I've done it now, so now I've got to deal with it. Um, so while I'm waiting for all of this to dry, I think it's time for us to strip that door, so let's quickly get that done. driver's door is now also completely stripped down same problem on this side i'm not able to disconnect the wiring harness which means it'll just be cleaned like it is in situ here uh, but i can clean the rest of the door it'll clean up just as nicely as that one did and any hope i had that this door card might be salvageable has been shattered because this is what's left of it after being flooded which is kind of what I expected, but I was sort of thinking it looked quite nice on the door, but uh, obviously it wasn't. So this door card will be going into the trash. There's no point in trying to save it. Um, I still haven't been able to find a set of black door cards. I've given up the search. It's been six months. They never come up for sale. What I did manage to find is a set of cashmere door cards, and those door cards are in great condition. So what I'll be doing is I'll be painting them with leather and vinyl paint, and you'll never know the difference once they go, go into the car. But for now, I'm going to get this door clean in three, two, one. Ta-da! Just look at that. She looks like new again. I've also gone and cleaned inside here. All of this stuff is clean. Inside the door again is nice and clean. And I have a cleaned up wiring harness. All the plugs have been cleaned out. So this is all good and ready to go again. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just gonna go clean out the rust in the window runners on both sides. So I need to get that into a coating of hammerite. But I am running out of time, guys. This has been an immense amount of work getting to this point where I have two doors cleaned and some of the parts painted up again. While I was disassembling this door, I think I have figured out what the best sequence is to rebuild a door. But that'll be in the next episode in part two of the door restoration. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching my videos and supporting my channel over the past year and a half. I never thought that I would have a channel that is this big. Uh, and I know in the YouTube world, this is a tiny, whiny tech channel. But for me, it's amazing to know that there are so many people interested to see how a 968 that's flood damaged and how a Safari is being built. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel and you like this kind of content, please remember to hit that subscribe button and you will get a notification of my next video, which will be arriving shortly. Until next time, guys. Goodbye.